Now that sucks. This is the sky shadow. For over 10 months now in the air, it was time to overhaul it. Give it a little love, care and updates. According to the latest stats, it has spent over 12 hours in the air, surviving even crashes, mid-air collisions or even direct wall hits, just by being glued back together again and keep it going. So far it has been flying with the Omnibus all-in-one F3. But it was time to clean up and get all those wires sorted. And trust me, there are lots of wires. But let's look at the components. This is the Omnibus. We will leave that and go over to this little beauty. The Matic F405 OSD. And well, time to change the receiver as well. Bye bye X8R, hello L9R. Now if you intend to build in that set, you'll have to be aware of the following setup. It will be necessary to put it to the left hand side of the fuselage while looking from the front. This is how I connected my Matic F405. Please note the servo layout, which is special if you use INF with this PDB and FC. Servo 3 needs to be connected to S2. Servo 4 is S3. And additionally, don't use UART 3 for GPS, because this is the only one who has the option to be an I2C port. It's good practice to use a step down for the servos. While overhauling the rest, I changed the ESC as well. Tinier lighter, easier. If you want to place those standoffs, simply glue them into the bottom of the fuselage. Next step is just to connect the uh, OSD, you uh, know, the, the PDB, and this is simply by done by just getting all the wires out of the way first of all and put it on and then we'll just screw those uh, those guys on here they are delivered with the F405 OSD so they take some of the vibration and just let's let's just screw them into the top here and then continue Connector for the flex cable needs to be like so. So this will bend like this and get into the FC. Um, putting us in the uh, situation of being able to connect to the USB port and we'll have to change the orientation of the board within INAV just to, to turn it around about uh, minus 90 degrees and this shouldn't be any problem at all. So, what we have then is just exposed USB port here, we have the power supply there, all wires end up somewhere in there, and we're done. I forgot something. Before we end here, you see this little guy. This is for the servo, as well as uh, this one. I've connected them like that, so you just can take your servo from anywhere you come, and simply plug them in. It makes it pretty, uh, pretty neat if you have to change something. In addition, I did uh, take some kind of uh, step down here from whatever to 5 volts, so um, the servos are autonomous uh, powered by the um, step down here, which provides, I think, about 2 or 3 amps maximum. So this will be fine for the two servos. I've never had a problem with it, but I thought I would make it right this time, so I did. I will assume this will be the best idea to handle this because um, if you connect um, WS2802 uh, 
2812 LEDs and compass or no not compass uh, GPS and buzzer and uh, whatever things like VTX then uh, these 5 volt specs in, t in within the PDB would just struggle and surely not last that long. Um, I felt more comfortable just doing so here as these LEDs in the back really pull some energy and I don't like brownouts on my flight computer so let's go safe here. Next up we'll switch the receiver. In this case pretty easy, both have the same dimensions and we need to pull them out of their plastic cases, otherwise we won't get it back into the wing. Simply solder the connections directly to the board. And furthermore, swap out the telemetry to RSSI. After having done so, I provide some shrink tubing to protect the board. Then just fiddle it back into the wing, get the wires out and you're good to go. The final step for me, hot glue the antennas. Now what do we have in store here for you? Just click one of these videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, we really appreciate your help. Are you ready? I will tell you some more about the sky shadow and what I did to it. Be seeing ya!